Good morning, modern steaders. 17 degrees warmer out this morning than it was the other morning. But that's all relative, I think. When it gets so cold, I don't think it really matters. <sighs> it's 12 degrees out this morning. So, at what temperature does it make a difference how cold or how warm it gets? Because uh, it's cold. Uh, I smell the wood stove going, guys. If you don't live in a cold climate, and you don't know what a nice wood fire smells like on a cold, brisk morning, you don't know what you're missing out on. Well, you might not be missing out on too much because you're not dealing with the cold, but you're missing out on that nice smell. It's just something about the smell of a wood stove on a cold morning. I don't know how you explain it, but maybe somebody else in the comments down below can explain what I'm talking about. Because I know a lot of y'all know what I'm talking about. Yep, that's pretty much all they do outside. They love playing with each other like that outside. When they're in the house, they're completely different. So, one of the reasons we put Little Man in with the box, as we were hoping, hear that? They're pretty quiet. We were hoping it would quiet them down and give them another buddy. And so far, it's starting to work. But, don't jinx us. Morning, y'all. Go ahead, get up there. You gotta move out of my way so I can walk. I can't walk if you stand in front of me. There you go. Yeah, the goal with Little Man being in here is to help it quiet the boys down. And man, I'm not gonna count our chickens yet because their eggs haven't hatched, but I'm thinking it's working. I hope it works. We can't have all that noisiness going on all the time. Morning, girls. Morning. Who's gonna be the first one down there? Hope, they're gonna catch up. You better go. They're coming for you, Hope. Your girl's got some good trails packed down. I like it. Go for it, quick! Uh-oh, Hope. You're lacking. Uh-oh, Willow. Go, Hope, go, go, go! Go, go, go! Uh -oh. What do you got there, Buttercup? Anything good? All right, stay warm. I'm gonna get you some water. You girls enjoy it out here for a little while. Little pee, You're supposed to stay on the ground. Morning, chickens. Moose, where are you? No crow this morning? There go the goats. Morning, peeps. Oh, sorry, Moose. Hope, they all left you. What's going on? You're over there by yourself this morning? She's like, yep, and I'll take all the hay by myself all day long. I don't mind. Can't wait till I get used to using that. Goat stop, they'll be out in that thing all the time. Morning, Goose. You coming over, Maverick, or what? There you go. LED light upgrade kit here 
for our DeWalt Chop Saw. Not a sponsored video, this was actually sent up by one of you viewers. Thanks Gary. Today we're gonna install it. Today we're gonna install it on our DeWalt Chop Saw. What it ends up doing is it creates a light over the blade. So I don't know if you watch this in our videos, but I always put it down, we're trying to line up the mark. This will cast a light where the blade is, or a shadow I should say. So we don't need to know. Oh, instead of explaining it, let's put it on and I'll show you what it does. If you guys have a chop saw, I think this is something you're probably end, gonna end up wanting to do. We're gonna need a bunch of Torx bits, a screwdriver, and some cutting pliers. First thing we're gonna wanna do is lock our chop saw down, and we'll extend it out, and then we'll lock it so it won't slide on us. We got a Torx bit screw there. We need to take this handle off first. Might be, let's see, a T40? Let's find out. No. Got a T30 Torx bit right here. Oh, it's where they hide the security strip <laughs> so people can't steal it. Interesting. Actually, before we do that, now let's... I'm gonna remove this little cover right here and this little piece right here. We're not gonna use it again. That's where our light's gonna go. So let's get it removed. We can set this piece aside, but we do need the screws. And then this little cover right here, we gotta take off, and this is where we're gonna run our wires to our LED light. So a lot of chop saws, you can get like a laser that runs, and it'll show you where you're cutting, but the lasers aren't accurate, and you always have to adjust them. From what I read on this one, is it's accurate because it casts a shadow on the blade, so it's not like, the laser levels or the laser guides. So we'll get it installed and we'll see how exactly it performs. So we need to save this piece. Now we can lock it back down and take off our handle. You know what? Let's unplug the chop saw. That's number one safety. I'm gonna go kill all the power. There. That should have been the first thing we did. So, don't do what I did. Unplug your saw first. All right, now we can remove this top cover. This bottom cover is gonna get removed next. We need to undo our switch here next. That's gonna be a T20. Boom. Kinda wanna look at, actually I'm gonna take a picture of how the wires run, and that way when I go to put it back in, we know where to run our wires. This bottom handle also needs to come off. I like taking pictures of wires, so that way I know, if I can't remember how they go back, I can look at my picture and see how it goes. All right, so let's set this aside for a second. We gotta switch back to our T25, take this bottom one off, Remove this, back and get set aside with this piece. Kit comes with a bottom handle, so let's get this installed, set back in place. Get our wires 
back in the general area they need to go. Put our light in place. So we'll raise this up. This is our LED light. So we're going to set this right here. Bada boom, bada bing. Before I tighten up any screws, I like to make sure both, both of them are lined up and snugged up first. This way, if nothing's aligned, it'll align itself when you tighten them all up. All right, then this piece we took off is gonna cover up where this wire goes. That wire's gonna fit in this groove right here, like so, and then come down here. All right, so that hides your wire under there. And then the wire gets to come out and feed through the groove and the handle right there. So then we have a new top plate and we're gonna have a switch, which is gonna go here. So we need to plug this wire in here. And then we got a wiring harness. Kit comes with a wiring harness and a plug. We want to plug this in to our switch. Then we want to run our white wire right here to our white wire right here. We'll disconnect them. The kit comes with a new female adapter. So we're going to cut off the female adapter that it comes with. Right there. Place the wire back. I want that a little bit longer. They don't give us enough room. Twist these two wires together. Put them in the new female connector that comes in the kit and crimp them together. Boom. That was easy. I always like giving everything a tug, making sure the wires are in there good. I don't know if you caught that or not, but don't do what I just did. What I said was correct. You wanna cut off the female end, and I cut off the male end. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut both connectors off. And then we're just gonna put in a butt splice and splice them together. Then again, I like every, then I like to give everything a good tug, make sure it's in there securely, which it is. And we can seat our wires nicely. Boom, boom. This one's gonna go there. Then we're gonna take our black wire. The black wire is easier. Let's go for the black wire. We're gonna undo the screw right here. It's a Phillips head screw on this one. And then There's two holes here. This hole is gonna line up with the screw that goes through the top handle. So make sure you put your screw in the one closest to the switch body.
Boom. I'm gonna lie all of our wires in these guide slots nicely. Put our top cover back on. Make sure none of our wires are getting pinched. So let's go under here, over. Before we put the handle back on, let's plug it in, check it over, make sure everything works first. The light is on. So let's do this. Shut it off. It's off. Turn it on. It's on. So it's supposed to cast a shadow on the board. Let's get a board up and check it out. Aha, I'll get a close up afterwards. Well, look at that. Let's get the handle put back on, but we know we got a shadow and I'll show you how it's gonna work in a minute. Sweet. So you just have to turn this on and off every time. That's not bad at all. You don't gotta plug it in or nothing. So now our handle goes, slides back in place. Bam. Loosen our slide back up, unlock it. So now we can push it back and I'll get a board. So normally, you can have a pencil. What this does is it casts a light on your blade and it cast a shadow over your blade so when you pull your saw down you have a shadow of your blade so it's your the exact width of your kerf and everything so you know that you're going to be taking out whatever that shadow line is so you can even see the teeth mark on there they're wider there and there so you know that's pretty cool it's like oh no wait right there right up to my line perfect the further away you get so if we had the mark here and our board was this wide, we wouldn't be able to see the shadow back there. So you want to be towards the outer edge still when you mark your board. That's good to know. But that is, that is so cool. The other nice thing too is, is it lights up your board. It's not just, you have light down here and not just a laser mark. <laughs> So that way our whole pencil mark is gone. So let's kind of, just kind of see. So we got our pencil mark. And we go right up to it. We cut it right up to it. I like that. Now I will say the blade itself is still about a 32nd to a 64th wider than that shadow. So if I, let's mark one more. Make a nice straight line. If I put my shadow right up to the edge of that, that whole shadow is gonna be that. If you see the shadow is just touching the front but not in the rear, I bet you when I cut that, that line's gonna be gone. So it's not completely gone, but it took more of the line off than what was marked. So the blade's a little bit wider than the shadow, which is good to know, but not much. Man, that's gonna make cutting. I'll have to bring Gina down later on and show her the upgrade, see what she thinks. Gary for setting that up. This is not a sponsored video, but I'll put a link in the video description down below of the website that the kit got shipped from. Man, I knew if I installed this on the saw and I didn't show it to y'all, you'd be like, ah, oh, what is that? So I think we'd make a video on it today because I've never seen that. I didn't know it existed. It sounds to me like if you buy the chop saw, 
with the you can buy this chop saw with the light on it. There's two different models, I guess. I got the one without it. If your chop saw, what it sounds like, has that black cover on it, you can make this an upgrade to it. I'm sure if you go to this website, M and M Tool and Machinery, I'll have a link down below. You can probably see what they have for different saws. But that is slick. I don't know if it's just a DeWalt light. I think it is. But I'm not 100% sure of that, so don't hold it to me. But man, you have a DeWalt saw and you use it a lot for cutting. I recommend that. Jeannie's going to be impressed. I'm going to be impressed. It's going to make cutting, especially, especially if you're working on a job that's more precise. Like if you're doing trim work and you need to be like exact, that's going to work really good. It's got the on-off button. It's not battery operated, which is nice. I know a lot of the laser ones I've seen that battery operated. So if your battery goes dead and you don't have a battery on you and you're working on a job, it kind of stinks. This one works with the power. Definitely like that. So I'll link that all below. Let's get on with the rest of the video now. You hiding from the dogs in there, Figaro? I don't even think we can see you on camera. How about now? No, we still, oh, there you are. You hiding? I don't blame you. That is a good hiding spot. Put it right here for right now. Looks good. Thank you, Cole. So cute. Want to see the upgrade? So right here you have an on-off switch now. Turn it on. Now you have a light. Oh. oh yeah, look at that. That's awesome. It's all because that light? It's all because that light, it casts the shadow on the blade. Mm. And that's how, almost as wide as your cut. So wherever my pencil mark is, that's where I'll put that? Yep. It'll save us some time. Well, I thought I was the only one that couldn't figure out, like, it to be exactly. Tonight for dinner, we're going to have some ham. I'm going to bake this in the oven. And then tomorrow, hopefully we'll have leftovers. I'm gonna make ham with potato soup, I think. Um, I'm just gonna add some water to this and I'm gonna bake it just like this. And I'm not sure if I wanna put a glaze on it yet or not, but I'll decide, because it's gonna cook for a little while. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this in the oven. I'm gonna do it so high so I have another, more space in there. I was going to say, I think that's the wrong bowl, but I just told you that one, didn't I? I should give you this job. Nah. Nah. My helper. Look at that, the sun is out and it's above freezing. Can you believe it? So nice. What's the matter, you didn't want, a, you didn't want a chicken flying out at you? Nope, and that's one of the great chances that you won't. Cause you got a higher fence. Right, and they wouldn't really want to fly. So. Right. How many eggs? Four. Four. Man, you are right on the money with your egg count guesses. Two, 
three, four. That's one pretty wrinkly and funky shaped. I saw that little pea. You were in the feeder again. Oh, you got plenty of hay. I don't need to bring any out. They can't. They gotta stay on the trail. Hope's like, nah, whatever. We gotta go say afternoon to the boys, even though they don't need food. Good afternoon, boys. What are you doing? Hello. Yeah. You're the three amigos. You guys keep each other company now. Yep, the three amigos. You're walking up her ice ramp. That's her sledding hill, not a goat hill. Go away. Oh, they want to go sledding. Oh, they go pooped down. on it. Go down, go get some hay. Oh, Willow's fertilizing the hill for you too. Willow might jump on it. Maybe Hope will go with you. Willow, watch out! Watch out! Watch out, Coach! I can... Watch out! <laughs> watch out, goats. Watch out! Hey, they may be going down the trail! Watch out! <laughs> it worked! They're like, what is this crazy girl doing? Mm -hmm. Right, Hope? No, oh, they're leaving. Goodbye. Oh, Willow found a briar to eat. <laughs> Watch out, Hope. She's crazy. <laughs> Ooh, I see at least an egg. Look at all that extra food you guys are hiding. How many eggs we got back there? One today. <laughs> Thank you, ladies. Looks delish. Don't give up this rest for your weary soul. Time to heal yet Still you fight With what you're told And hold on to your I want to thank Gary again for sending up that little upgrade kit for the DeWalt chop saw. That's just going to make a huge difference now when we're down there working. Thank you. I don't think Olivia was expecting for the goats to come running up her sledding hill. Oh, I think that was pretty funny. Never had roasted cauliflower before, and I'll tell you what, that was pretty good. If you don't like beets, try roasting them. When you roast the beets in the oven, it makes them so much sweeter. I'm telling you guys, you'll like them. Thanks for coming along on our homesteading journey with us, guys. You're a huge blessing to us in our homestead, and we'll see you right back here in the next video at Lumna Acres. <laughs>